Hello friends and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Chromatic Sauce and today we're going to watch me draw. For this drawing I'm starting off with a dark gray marker as a base for my blacks. I do this because when you're using a black colored pencil on a white sheet of paper, usually you can see straight through to the paper even when you press really hard with the black. So turning the paper darker gray with the marker helps prevent that. It makes it so the black appears much blacker in those areas. So I was just putting the dark gray right in the blackest parts of the dog's fur. And then I go in with the black colored pencil to just fill in the darkest areas first. I start at the top and I just make those dark areas as dark as I can while adding hair strokes and then I start adding shading to the rest of the fur. For this photo that I'm going off of, uh, it's a pretty good photo. There's a lot of detail in the chest of the dog and in the face, but the ears are a little bit dark. This was a pretty dark picture. I brightened it up a little bit, but the ears were missing a little bit of detail. So I was struggling to get the ears right. So that's why I skipped right over to the eyes because the eyes were very clear. And then I started just working on the ears as best I could, uh, just trying to make it look as much like the photo and like it would in real life as I could, just adding dark and dark. Sometimes it's scary adding black because there's not really going back once you add the black to the paper. <laughs> but these ears in the photo, even after brightened, are pretty dark because, you know, it's the inside of the dog's ears. Of course it's going to be dark. And after that, I slowly start adding more and more dark. Then I break out a lighter color gray pencil to bring out some of the highlights in the dark fur. If you look at the top of the head, even though you know it's black fur, you can see on the sides of the head it's much lighter and there's lighter spots in the middle of the forehead of the dog, between right between the eyebrows. So I left those spots lighter and it's really easy to use a lighter color gray just to bring out uh, some of those lighter pieces without taking away from the darkness of the fur. Basically, I was just going slow but steady, just adding detail. You don't want to add dark where there is no dark. This dog has really light fur right next to really dark fur. So I was being careful when it came to using my glassine paper to make sure I didn't smear anything with my hands. And I was also being careful not to bring the black pencil too far into the light color fur. I was being pretty stingy with my application and I also just wanted to make sure that I was making the dog look like it had black fur but not that the paper was just solid black and that base marker helps with that and so does that gray colored pencil so it's just a slow process you don't want to go too dark too fast except for the spots that you know are going to be pure black. This drawing while the ears weren't as detailed, the chest and the face had a lot of detail. So I wanted to make sure that I got my pencils really sharp so I can get a lot of those hair strokes to be really fine and stand out. And then I move on to the nose. Then I add a little bit of color first before I add in my highlights. That uh, keeps the highlights a little bit lighter in case I go over it with the black at all. Usually dog noses are overall dark, like this dog's nose is pretty dark. Uh, so adding in that light makes it so if I do make it a little too dark, I could either take an X-Acto knife and scrape off an, a layer or it'll be much easier to erase it back to a slightly lighter color to get that highlight really strong in the nose. And then I just keep on adding more and more detail to the face. Sometimes for things like this, you just gotta do hair stroke by hair stroke, literally one hair at a time, that's how you get the detail. You can't see hair strokes unless you're drawing the hair strokes. And then I color in the face and the chest, all the lighter fur, I colored in with an ivory and a light beige before I go in with some light grays to bring in a little bit more depth into that fur without bringing too much darkness. Cause it's really easy if, you, if I were to go in with straight black it would be just just way too dark in some areas of the fur, which I may struggle with that sometimes, but I just like black pencils, what can I say? <laughs> but just like you see here, just going stroke by stroke, it really makes the fur in the face way more dimensional when you add that little bit of shading and then go in with the slightly darker pencils. I'm not adding too much at a time, just enough to give the hint of what I'm seeing in the picture. If I make it too dark, it'll be dirty and mucky. Then once I was done with the face, I shaded in all my light colors just so I knew what not to make dark. As I shade the chest, 
I take the sharp black colored pencil, I draw the lines going into the fur. That way it breaks up the shape of the light hair color. And I just did the same thing I did with the face. I used a brown and a lighter gray just to add some dimension to that beige color. You don't want to make it too dark, so you just gotta deal with the shading for the dark fur and the light fur in different ways for an animal with multi-colored fur. And then for the silhouette of the animal, I was uh, making sure that you could see each individual stroke like on the neck where the dog was really fluffy. I made sure that you could see those individual hairs by the neck going off onto the background. So for the rest of the body, I did the same thing. I put my black down where it was definitely black. Um, that gave me a baseline for how dark to shade the rest of the body of the dog. So having that black there, I know how far I need to take the rest of the paper. It's so annoying when you shade so slowly with... It probably gives a smoother result, but if you shade slowly, then you have to keep going back and keep going back until you get the dark to as dark as possible. It's so frustrating to me when you have something shaded and then you finish the darkest and then you take a step back and your darks aren't dark. Your black is light gray, or maybe medium gray. <laughs> um, so that's why I always get the blacks in first. That's what I was taught when I was in art school, and that's just what I like to do. I really like having a strong black presence in my drawings when I can, because it's the black that gives it the depth. It's the black that gives it the dimension. And it's the same thing for the rest of the fur, with the light beige and shading it with darker grays and just slowly building up dimension. For the dark areas, for black areas, you can go straight in with dark, but for the light areas, you gotta take it slow. You gotta do it little by little, otherwise it'll get dark and mucky real fast. And then at the end of this one, I thought the drawing was looking a little bit washed out, which can happen sometimes especially for a realism portrait when you try to match the color exactly sometimes the photo you're working from is washed out so what I did basically I just took a bright yellow colored pencil and I went over some of the darker parts of the beige colored fur just to give it a little bit more warmth in the fur and that really set me up nicely for the background that I chose which was a nice light purple and as we know, yellow and purple are contrasting colors, so I think it really helped the dog pop off the page a lot more, and I really love how this drawing turned out. Please leave a comment down below letting me know what do you think of this drawing. Let me know what sort of drawings you'd like to see from me next. Please like and subscribe. Hit that bell. If you'd like, you can follow me on Instagram at Chromatic Sauce. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.